Hello and welcome to the second edition of the Trackster Athletic Reports. This news is dated from the 3rd of January to the 8th of January. In this video today we're covering similar news to what we covered last week. That would be the shoe news, transfer news, team news, the world of running news, race results news, let's run T and the runner's spotlight segment. And hopefully you'll leave this video with a bit more knowledge of what's going on in track and field at the minute. First up is the shoe news. And there has just been a leak of the Puma Super Shoe, which you can obviously see on the screens now. I'm not sure if this is confirmed, but this is the image we can find and it's leaked by a credible source who have leaked things in the past. So we assume this is to be true and this is what the shoe would look like. As well as this, they have registered this shoe's name as well as two other supplementing shoes names. On to the next shoe is Han Shoes. This one is sort of a new innovation and it's been around for a while now, but the first like, marketing push from them has started this week. Everyone always jokes about running on springs as the next step. Well, it's here. Um, a shoe what literally looks like you're running on springs. We will get into the technology of this shoe in later dates as we're recording a podcast with the owner and hopefully filming some more content with them as well. And I'm sure when it does get released, we'll also be reviewing the shoe. But it does look very interesting. And if you want to find out more information, you can head over to their Instagram, which is at han.shoes, and you can see the website link there. On to probably the brand of 2020, Sacconi. They are releasing an OG design for their new up and coming shoe range. This obviously features the second edition of all the endorphin range as well as some other classics such as the Triumph and Kinvera. And next up is a very, very nice looking shoe which is the A6 prototype. We obviously seen a few A6 prototypes flying around and this one is probably the nicest yet and arguably probably the nicest super shoe what you'll see. Um, I really like the blue and hopefully we can see some races in that soon. This was taken from the Edikon Japan race last week. And finally, the last proto of the day is the Adidas Spike. It does look like a super spike, so can we see the first competitor to Nike's Dragonfly and Air Zoom victory in this Adidas Spike? Adidas obviously took the super shoe world by storm this year, probably releasing the best shoe of the year in that regards. And now it looks like they're going to be making a move onto the track with this spike. On to this week's transfers, where again, there's been a lot of people who have been moving around. This should die out as the season carries on because it's sort of a time period where contracts run out and new contracts get signed. But at the minute, there's still a lot of contracts what are you know, up in the air and many people are leaving clubs and joining others and leaving teams and joining other brands. First of all, Nike's purge continues. Many, many more athletes are leaving Nike. And we can only presume one of the main reasons for this is the fact that Nike are indeed basically stripping 50% of their contracted athletes. First, Nike departure is Sandy Morris, the pole vaulter. She has left Nike to join Puma. Another person joining Puma. That Usain Bolt sponsorship money um, coming back into Puma is definitely paying off as they're investing heavy in new athletes and new products this year. Next up, we covered this in last week's story, Ryan Hill. Obviously, he's left Bowman Track Club, but we didn't know where he was going to, and it has been announced that he has gone to Hoka, um, Northern Arizona Elite, to be more precise. Next up is 206 marathon runner Tedese Abraham. He has left Adidas and joined on. It's the first news I've seen of someone joining on this season, and to leave Adidas after the year they've had, um, there must be more to that story, but we don't really know much detail. Kate Grace has also left the Bowman Track Club following in Ryan Hill's footsteps, but she has not joined another brand. She has stayed with Nike. I'm still unsure where she's gone team-wise, but she's still a Nike athlete as of this moment. We briefly touched on this in last week's video, but Molly Siddall has joined Puma Track Club or Puma Running Team. They haven't got a name yet. I don't know why I called them Track Club. Got a bit fiery on Strava, which I absolutely love because... You know, it needs to be speak, spoke about what happened and by the looks of things, Sir just didn't re-sign her. And that is one of the reasons why she joined Puma. But she's posted on her Instagram, already posted some shoe teasers by covering up her running shoes with some bunny slippers as well as some Crocs. It was sadly announced this week that Cal Merber is no longer a professional runner. He was at Hoka with a team. Uh, we'll touch on that in a second, but he's no longer part of that team. And he's also no longer a professional runner. He will continue to run in the sport, but he just rearranged his priorities. UK 800 meter and 1500 meter runner, Fly Busy, as most people call him, has joined Texas. He's a 146 800 meter runner and would be a great addition to Texas's 
middle distance team. And finally, another runner from the UK. It is rumoured that Joshua Lay is currently in contract talks with some brands and it will soon be announced which brand he has signed for. On to the team news. Puma Track Club. I called it Puma Track Club before. I'm going to call it again. I don't know their actual name, but Puma will be starting a team very soon. A lot of money have been put into Puma over the recent weeks and I'm guessing a team probably based out at altitude somewhere, either in Arizona or Boulder. Hoka were originally the sponsor for NJMY and now that team has turned to NJMYTC as Hoka have stopped supporting this group. A team I definitely know the name of is Tracks to Elite. We are starting a team. We'll be announcing athletes joining quite soon. Um, it is a long process, but we are looking to try and get this team as a social media presence and then also a competitive team down the line. Essentially, what we aim to do is produce a lot of content and sell a lot of merch, which would be ideal for everyone. Keep a lookout for that in the near future and also follow our Instagram for that team, which is at trackster.elite. On to some race results now. There actually hasn't been many that we're aware of. First of all, it ended up not actually being an official race, but Ailish McColgan did a 10k in 31.05, which is a personal best for her. Turns out the marshals sent everyone the wrong way and they finished a 10k in the middle of nowhere. But because it wasn't the official course, the results can't stand. But she did run 31.05. And also, University of Washington runner Sam Tanner, who is 20 years old, ran 3.36 for 1,500 metres, which is scarily fast for January. In the world of running at a whole, Stride Report ranked the men's NCAA distance runners. It came to no surprise that Louise Gahalva was ranked first and Cooper Tier was also in the top three. I won't speak too much on this, and if you do want to go and read about it, you can find it on Stride Report as there's quite a comprehensive list. The half marathon world record holder, Candy, has announced that he will be going for the 10,000 metre gold in Tokyo, competing against the likes of Joshua Cheptegei, Ronit Skipruto, Yomif Kajelcha, Mo Farah. It's going to be even more stacked field than it originally was, and it's looking like it's increasingly tough for Mo Farah to defend this title, as there's countless, countless world record holders now in this field, which is just crazy to think about probably the best 10,000 meter field in history also we were going to use this part to talk about ben crawford's new magazine and the fact that it is now on sale but it sold out he put on sale 100 copies and they sold out within around 30 minutes so yeah you can't buy one but keep a lookout for february because i'm sure they'll sell out just as quickly even though he is lowering the price and also upping the quantity from 100 to 300 copies on to the let's run tea which this will definitely be the last segment of the Let's Run Tea, as you can see in a second. But first of all, Altitude Chambers are banned in Norway. So this headline, obviously, stating Galen Rupp would struggle to be a Norwegian athlete because Galen Rupp is known for constantly living in an altitude tent. I find this a weird rule. I think it's something to do with the, the fact that 99.9% .9 of the population wouldn't be able to have access to these chambers. But then again, 99.9% .9 of the population wouldn't have access to altitude training. So it seems like a weird rule. I need to read more into it to see the exact reason why. But that's all I read on Let's Run. And the reason why this segment will be no more is because Let's Run had a thread on the running YouTuber rankings. And not a single person said Trackster. They mentioned the likes of Total Running Productions, Nick Simmons, Zach Levitt, etc. But no Trackster. So yeah, we're probably either going to have to up our game or never mention let's run ever again i i'm fine by doing both to be honest and finally finishing off the news for this week is our runners spotlight this week the spotlight is on ethan hussey who is a junior british runner and has some absolutely crazy times at ridiculous ages as a 15 year old he ran 1428 for 5k as a 16 year old he ran 345 for 1500 meters and 149 for 800 meters as a 15 year old he ran 350 for 1500 and 152 for 800 and when he was 14 he ran four minutes for 1500 meters so thank you for watching the news this week please comment if we've missed any news as reading the comments is another way to sort of improve people's education on the running world leave it a like subscribe and comment what things you want to see in the future from us thank you for watching and have a nice friday